Hi there, this is Alex from 3D Chimera. Today I'm going to show you guys a little bit about uh, the differences between a factory file in Simplify 3D and a G code from Simplify 3D. So usually this comes up, uh, we've asked a customer maybe to send us a, uh, a file from what they've been printing. Perhaps uh, you printed a part and maybe you weren't happy with how it turned out or you're trying to figure out why a particular feature turned out in one way or another. So let's take a look at this example. These are uh, some brackets that um, we've designed up here for a table that we've got here at 3D Chimera. So um, I'll just go ahead and slice this like normal. Let's take a quick look at it. Um, everything looks good to us, right? We'll go ahead and hit save. When we hit save to tool past the disk, what that's going to do is bring up the ability to actually save G code. So I made a little folder here and we'll just call this one, uh, I don't know, leg supports first print. All right. And we'll save that G code. Now, under normal circumstances, that G code will allow you to actually run the printer. So if I go in here under our factory file, we'll take a look at this guy. Um, we can actually open this like in a text editor, for example. Um, let's take a quick look see here. And you can see this is actually a fully editable text file. So as you uh, scroll down here, we can actually see all the text um, G code commands that are going to the printer, right? So lots of code there. If you wanted to get in and tweak something, you could do that. You can see all the settings for the printer up here in the beginning. But in general, that's difficult for us to troubleshoot from because, you know, that's designed for a computer to read, not so much a human to read. So the other file format in Simplify 3D that you've got is called a factory file. So if we were to go in here and save the factory file, you can also name this anything you want. We usually recommend to use the same name so that it's easy to do. So here we got leg supports underscore first print. So we'll save it something like that. We'll go here and we'll type leg, let's see if we can spell that, leg supports underscore first print and save. So in general, we recommend doing that as your process for any print that you're doing. So you take that G code, you send it over the printer, you hit print. Let's say you did that and uh, something happened. Like maybe uh, when the part came out, you had trouble perhaps uh, removing the support material inside of these holes here and maybe the wrap stuck to the bottom of the part too much let's just say something like that happened and so you'd like to figure out like what's going on how can we get to the bottom of this so the first thing that we'd like to do here at 3d chimera is to look at that factory file so we can figure out what exactly you told the printer to do and so uh, when we open this up we we'll actually come in here we'll look at all the different parameters that you set um, and we'll kind of run through a quick slice and we'll look for any glaring errors the first thing we'd see is that in this particular part, you've got a lot of support material up in these holes, right? And one of the cool things about circular holes in 3D printing um, is that that's a self-supporting geometry, especially a small hole like that. So maybe the first thing we would do is we'd come into one of these guys and we'd say, all right, well, let's go ahead and redo our supports. We'll do it from the build platform only and remove those supports in that area. We'll do the same thing here and we'll go ahead and uh, say from build platform only only and we'll remove those supports there as well. Maybe you also said, you know, actually, I don't even think I need a wrap. You know, this has got a nice flat bottom. Um, we'd look, just like to print right on the build plate. But, you know, every time I try to do that and just turn off the wrap, they have a problem. That makes sense. Um, so we'll turn off the wrap here. If we were to go ahead and just slice that quickly. We can kind of take a quick look, see how that would print. Looks like it would probably turn out okay. If we were to scroll down here in the bottom, you'd see that these first couple layers on the supports are kind of kind of iffy they're like singular lines there so we can just go into the settings we could tweak a few things in here so under support for example um, we could add some base layers like maybe 10 base layers this is kind of a like a trick that we can do to effectively like simulate the effect of a, a raft but in the bottom of support material it's kind of like dense supports on the bottom now it looks nice and dense so you know those quick um, manipulations there we should be in pretty good good position to print we might look at this and say you know boy i bet we could probably speed up the print time maybe we pop up the layer thickness a little bit here because we know uh that something like this is still going to print pretty nicely like that and okay so great we've got the print time down now we're down at about eight hours and 22 minutes looks like we've removed those pesky support uh features inside of the holes and now we don't have to deal with the wrap as it sticks to the plate so this looks great so we would do the same thing we'd save this out and now we would call it let's say 
you know, second print. And we would make sure to also save that factory hop file here as second print. And then you'd be in good shape. So now we'd have, again, in that folder, both the factory file and the G code. Now what's tricky is if you send us just the G code, we could open that up and take a quick look. And we can actually see the slice. Whoops, I double clicked that. We can actually see the slice, and it looks pretty great here. But um, we don't have those settings easily manipulable. So if you had spent any time, you know, editing some of these things, maybe you had played with the, let's say, the separation distance between the support material and the raft, or perhaps you've been messing a little bit with temperature and extrusion multiplier, and, and that's why things are sticking. We wouldn't really be able to get down to the meat and potatoes of what's happening there in the issue. So we always ask um, to take a look at that factory file. That's going to give us all the data. The other cool thing is it actually brings the 3D file along for the ride. So um, if we were, let's close a couple of these windows I opened. Uh, we were to actually open up this uh, second print file. One really cool thing that not a lot of people know is we can actually go in here and um, we can actually export the model as an STL. So it's actually there completely in the folder, which is pretty neat. It's cool that, um, you know, you've actually got all that data in there. So the... Um, the factory file is the way to go when you're looking to share technical data about what you're looking to print. I hope that helps. Gives you a little bit of an overview. Thanks for your time, guys. Bye.